Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're learning some incredible New Jersey history today at Monmouth County Historical Association. Located in Freehold Borough, the association collects, preserves, and interprets both the museum and archives of Monmouth history and makes them available to the public. I have director Evelyn Murphy with me to tell us about the museum's physical building and its exhibits. We're in lovely Freehold Borough. Tell me, where can someone find the Historical Association? Well, we're on Court Street. If you see behind us uh, is the uh, Monmouth County Courthouse. Okay. And across the street is the very tall monument that's for the Battle of Monmouth. Interesting. And this is our museum here. This building here, this was made uh, officially for the association? Yes. They broke ground in October of 1929 and the depression did not hurt them a bit. The stock market crash, they had a strong group of doctors, lawyers, and people who had their money elsewhere. They started, broke ground in October 1929 and finished two years later in 1931. So tell me about the association and what you do. Well, we were formed 116 years ago in 1898 by a group of Monmouth County residents who felt very strongly that they wanted a place to preserve Monmouth County history and preserve artifacts and items and properties that are important to history. So our mission is to gather everything related to Monmouth County history, whether it's economic history, social history, cultural history. We have um, artifacts, we have papers, we have, uh, we have a museum collection of over 30,000 items. Why is Monmouth County history so important? Well, Monmouth County uh, really is a crossroads. Um, if you think of our location between New York, Philadelphia, the Washington DC area, we were very important in the revolution and we've been important to development of the East Coast all throughout the history of European settlers coming to the New World. People came to Monmouth County from Holland, from France, from Germany, from England, uh, then fought about it and went through the revolution and we ended up with the country we have. There were a lot of important things that happened during the revolution. The Battle of Monmouth was right down the street of about a, two miles away from here. Um, and then after the Battle of Monmouth, uh, we became a, uh, we, we were a farming area. We then became um, a, uh, an area for further economic advancement. And again, being the crossroads between New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. We're right in the middle of it. What's the goal of the association? Our goal is to collect, preserve, interpret, research, and share everything related to Monmouth County history. This building was built and finished in 1931. It has steel beams, fireproof brick. It is indestructible. A huge tree fell on it two years ago when we had that big storm here in Freehold. Cut a notch out of the roof. The tree was so big that it blocked the entire front of the building. But all that happened was this little notch. Now it cost us um, almost $25,000 to fix that little notch because it was very big. Mm -hmm. But if this were normal construction, we would have lost half of the building. We would have been out of business. So when we came into the building, we're in this sort of educational area. Tell me about this. Well, this is our largest gallery. This is the Washington Gallery. And we have changing exhibitions here. Um, over the past 22 years, there have been more than 40 different exhibitions mounted in this space. Uh, this one that's up right now is called Farm, Agriculture in Monmouth County from the 1600 to 2013. And we did this for the celebration of the New Jersey 350th anniversary, which was during 2013. We are taking this exhibition down um, within the next week and we'll be mounting a new exhibition after that. This one is going to be focused on African American music in Monmouth County uh, for a century. Why is farming so important to Monmouth County's history? Well, um, farming occurred throughout the county, farming of all kinds. There were dairy farms, there were egg farms, there were um, 
uh, horse farms. And uh, during the 1700s, 1800s, it was a big part of the livelihood. And today, we have a lot of preserved open space because the county and the state have provided funding as the farms went out of business to purchase the farmland, keep it as open space, and now it's turned into recreational areas. We've also preserved a lot of historic buildings and structures that were farming uh, buildings. Share some of those with us. We own five historic buildings, and each one of them was had some degree of farming at one point in another. Uh, four of the five are pre-revolutionary. Right here in Freehold, we have Covenhoven House. Um, in um, Homedale, we have Holmes Hendrickson House. We have um, in Middletown two houses, Marlpit Hall and uh, the Taylor Butler House that are on adjoining properties. And we have in Shrewsbury, the Allen House. Today, there are a number of Monmouth County organizations, volunteer organizations that are working currently to preserve farms. For example, in Little Silver, the Parker Homestead, 1665. That is a property that has been owned since 1665 in a single family, the Parkers. And it has been a farm throughout its existence. It's right next door to Sickles Market, and Sickles um, was a relative of the, uh, the Parkers. And that volunteer group is right now working to make that building into a preserved space that can be a community gathering place and also a place that's going to show how the house developed over the years, from the earliest years to the current. Um, in Millstone, there is a group that is um, saving um, the Baird homestead and they're taking two barns that were in Millstone and were going to be raised. They got volunteers together and during the past year, they took the barns apart with volunteer labor, no, nobody paid, and labeled everything. They're transporting it to their property, they're re-erecting the barns, and then they're bringing historic artifacts that were farming tools from uh, the 1800s and 1700s. Well, these are historic farm implements um, interspersed with actually paintings of historic farms. Um, and by looking at what the farm looked like or what the painter showed the farm looking like, and we're looking at these, uh, these tools, we get this feeling of what it was like to be a farmer back then. If you look at, uh, for example, on the wall here, these um, shovels, a simple tool that was made to shovel grain or to shovel something on the farm. But when you look at the work that went into that, that's true artistry. And um, our curator, when she hung these things on the wall, it created sort of an artistic view, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at this, I could, if we don't think about the individual items, I can see it as just sort of an abstract uh, piece of art. I see a barrel over there. Is that a wine barrel? Uh, more likely it was used for grain or for transporting other things. It does did come from Freehold. Okay. Wine wasn't a part of this area, was it not? It was not historically, um, but it is becoming so now, mm -hmm. yes. This is a uh, root cutter. This um, came to us from the New Jersey um, Agricultural Museum, which uh, closed down up at Rutgers. And an uh, interesting thing about this, other than it's so, such a beautiful blue color, uh, I think it's interesting that a farmer would go out of his way to paint it because it makes it more attractive but this was originally a hand cranked uh, tool and over here you can see the farmer has jerry-rigged it to add an engine to it and that's the way farmers operate and that's the way they operate today when something is outmoded and needs to be updated you don't throw it away you add an extra thing to it this uh, ladder you can see behind it that's another example. Uh, this uh, is on loan from the Parker Homestead. It was in their barn. And I like to look over here. If you look here, you can see, um, you see this is a ladder that's used in an orchard tree. It goes up and, and anchors in, in the branches of the tree. And then you go up and you pick the apples. Well, down here, you see one of the uh, rungs broke. Well, did the farmer um, even bother to pull the broken rung off? No. Did he care whether the rung was too long? No. Life is short. We've got to get this done. Pounded Another on. One on. But did he throw the ladder away? Because it was no, no. You make things work. You, you, you. The ingenuity that it takes to be a farmer, mm -hmm. even you know, continuing today. I think any farmer who's in the business today will tell you that it takes a lot. Oh, this is a grain cradle. This was created as a cutting tool for a very experienced person to be able to cut the grain, 
and you can see the handle they would hold in the other edge and there is a very sharp blade here. So they're going through and this is all done by hand. Evelyn, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for having us doing this segment. We've actually run out of time for this segment, but when we come back, I want to talk to Karen Greco about your educational programs. And we'll do that when we come back. Thank you for joining us on This is Jersey.